Welcome to the Two Geeks in a Microphone podcast, your one-stop shop for television, movie, video games, comic books, book reviews, and more. Now, without further ado, here's Steven and Mike. Welcome, everybody, to the Two Geeks and a Microphone Show. Woohoo! Man, what a day. This is going to be a great conversation going on. I am your co host, Mr. Stephen Boster, along with wonderful co host, Mr. Michael Shanks. Mike, say hey to everybody. Good morning to all you geeks out there in Geekdom Land. I am pumped about today. You want to know why, Mike? Because we got a good one for you. Uh, <laughs> that, that was just for my Touché, wife. Touche, my friend. Touche. <laughs> that was just for my wife. That was a little private joke. Oh, goodness. Well, hey, we are talking today about Batman. Love me some Batman. Me too. And and Mike had the great idea of saying, hey, we probably should get some Batman episodes in before we do the review of the movie, the new, you know, the Batman movie coming out. And a uh, brilliant idea because uh, he was like, hey, let's, uh, I want to do Hush. And uh, and so I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And, and so have you ever read it? Like, no, I think I know about it, though, kind of a thing. So so there's the movie and the comic books, and we'll, we're, that's what we're going to get into today and stuff. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it because... I got I got some words to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people got a, words to say about Hush and the differences between the comic book and the movie because they're they're pretty vast differences. I mean, it's almost a different story when you watch the movie compared to mm-hmm. the comic books. Uh, there's some things that carried over to the movie that were really good. And then there's just stuff, if you read the comic book, it's like, uh, what did you guys do? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, everybody, we're going to get into all that. I'm pretty excited about it um, and, uh, and and give our opinions and thoughts and feelings about it all. But first, I have to give a shout out. I got to give a shout out to our friends at Nerdery and Murdery. If you are watching the video podcast, I'm going to hold it up. They sent me the mug. There's my mug. Nerdery oh, and Murdery mug. show up. <laughs> Be on our show. Mike's isn't showing up really well. Yeah. And all uh, those are green screen things going on. So, hey, uh, <clears throat> so I got my mug. Yay. I love it. Love my mug. Um, so we thanks had a blast to, with uh, those guys. Thanks to Jeffrey and Zig for the mugs. We appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, it was great being on the show with them doing the crossover. And uh, I'm pretty excited about what's coming up. We've got some other ideas coming up. So, um, man, this is, you know, I, I was looking at, you know, podcast stuff. I'm always looking at different things about what can we could do with the podcast and, you know, get, uh, and, um, I am fascinated how many don't make it past a year and, and we are going a year strong. We've got so many ideas and so many things in the pike coming, um, this it's it's been fun. This is really fun. So I, I'm uh, excited I'm, about our uh, Kofi only show, the uh, um, sci-fi two geek sci-fi cl- uh, classic sci-fi series that we're talking about. Um, I, I think we got some great stuff in plan for that, but that will be a Kofi only. So you have to subscribe to Kofi, and there'll yep. be that'll be in the different tiers. So you'll be able to get uh, the audio for I think the uh, lowest tier, and then if you want the video, I think that's in the next tier. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong in that, Stephen. You know the tiers better. No, <laughs> no, I think we're doing really well with that. And, and some of that's still new for us, and so we would love to get your feedback on things that you would like to see, uh, kind of on what tiers would it be appropriate? Because really, we're doing this for you guys, 
and right. for those who are supporting us. And, and we want to make things accessible and, and just have a great time. So, yeah, classic sci-fi series. We, we just spent some time brainstorming some ideas. But if, if there's a classic sci-fi movie, now we're putting on the parameter. It's got to be early 80s and older. Right. Kind of a thing. So... If you want us to talk about one or if you have a favorite one and, and we may even do, we, we even got in the tier system where we'll have you on the show and we'll all talk about it kind of a thing. So, um, I, I'm, it's, we're just having a great time. We appreciate, you know, the support that we're getting, um, not only the encouragements and stuff, but I think also the, you know, the finances help us pay for stuff like restream and things like that. So, <laughs> so sorry, I got to put this up. <laughs> yeah, Sure. Yeah, we already got chats coming in. So Matt Hempel, in response to our our uh, so, before, <laughs> so before I was born, got it. <laughs> yes, Matt. So before you were born, <laughs> that's funny. That's great. Uh, right. All right. Hey, Angela. Welcome. Um, Angela says uh, real quick. Hi, guys. I, said, I never finished the comics. LOL. Uh, the first week of work uh, was crazy, man. I hope your week went well. Um, kind of a thing so um uh you saw the movie okay uh, i'm just gonna let you know uh, angela there are gonna be spoilers in yep. this <clears throat> and uh, we'll get into that in a minute uh about the differences and stuff like that but i just want to give you a heads up right. um uh but thanks for letting us know <laughs> we'll try to be sensitive to that <laughs> oh right. goodness oh even uh we even have uh Oh, Mark from uh, Three Geeky Dads is in here, too. Oh, sweet. Uh, and Derek. <laughs> um, and Man, nothing makes you feel like you're old. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Oh, my gosh. Well, hey, now, now some of that we're talking about is before we were born, too. So, <laughs> Some of those will be before we were That's born. Right. Yes. That's right. Before you and I were and all. So... All right, we ready to right. dig into this? Mark, hey Mark, hey everyone, hey Mark, and then Derek, hey Derek, um, great to have you here. Saw the movie, read the comic originally. That's Derek. Okay, good. We'll probably get some good uh, discussions. I had with, read the uh, comic years ago, and I had to read it, reread it. Of course, um, my lovely wife got me a uh, trade paperback copy of this for Christmas. So that was another reason I wanted to do it. <laughs> so while Steven's figuring his thing out, we'll talk about uh, Hush just a little bit. Um, so uh, the original uh, comic book actually came out in, I believe it was 2002. Yes, it was 2002 that the original comic came out. Um, the story arc was written by Jeff Loeb, and it was penciled by Jim Lee and inked by Scott Williams. Um, colored by Alex Sinclair and uh, edited by Bob Shrek. So, um, and just a little background about Jim Lee. Jim Lee actually grew up in St. Louis uh, as a teenager. So he's kind of a hometown hero for, for us in the Midwest uh, St. Louis area. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he was uh, uh, from Korea originally. Anyway, uh, yeah, Jim Lee is kind of a hometown uh, boy for St. Louis Knights. Uh, he grew up in Chesterfield, uh, Chesterfield, Missouri. Um, I, I don't know a lot about the background of Jeff Jeff Loeb or anything like that, but um, so I was just telling him that the uh, uh, comic book was re originally released in two thousand two, and Joe uh, Joe. Jeff Loeb was the writer and Jim Lee was the penciler on, on the, these particular uh, issues. <clears throat> Just giving a little background on, on the history of, of Hush. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, it sounds great. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the movie came out in 2019, so it's, it's fairly new. Um, voice actors involved in that were Jason O'Mara. He voiced Batman and uh, Jennifer Morrison. Uh, voice Selena Kyle, um, Stuart Allen, voice Damian Wayne. So we got some different voices on on this one, different actors from what we're used to. Um, I mean, I would have rather had Kevin Conroy, but, um, you know, he did okay. 
I, I didn't mind Jason O'Mara as Batman. He he did okay. Kevin Conroy will always be the voice of Batman in my mind, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, anytime I see Batman or I'm reading Batman, uh-huh. it's Kevin Conroy's voice that I'm hearing. Right. Yes, and the Joker's absolutely. voice, I hear Mark Hamill. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Right. So, Just a real quick nod, real quick. Angela, yeah, thank you. She said, welcome to the party, Stephen Boston. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That's a good one. Um, um, oh, hey, I won't say what Matt says. Matt says, um, would you say that Hush is in the top three best Batman of all time? Um, let's see. I, I would put Killing Joke as number one. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Killing Joke. Okay. Is, killing. Uh, this is my personal. Killing Joke is number sure. one. Sure. Dark Knight Re- Returns is number two. I would say Death in the Family is number three. And I would probably put Hush at number four. So it's close, Matt. Very close. <laughs> you know, um, I loved, absolutely loved the comic. It had, it, the first, uh, so the first in the series, excuse me, the first in the series just had me. I was like, oh my goodness, the art is great. Oh, yeah. the, the way the storytelling is going is incredible. Um, Oh, Jim Lee um, is a fantastic artist. I mean, he he just blows yeah. my mind. And and the, yeah. the funny thing about this, okay, Jim Lee when when this was written and and done, um Jim Lee was still working with uh Image Comics, which was he helped start Image yeah, uh, alongside right. Todd McFarlane. Um and some other uh artists who who decided they wanted to move away from the big 2. Marvel and DC mm-hmm. and do their own thing. So he was mm-hmm. still kind of running image, but he was, he agreed to do this comic series. And the thing is with Jim Lee, he, 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 he isn't best. He isn't very good at scheduling. <laughs> so the concern was, would Jim Lee actually be able to turn in a, a comic per month? That was the big question. Because he wasn't good about deadlines and stuff. He kind of did things at his own pace. And it's like, uh, yeah, I'll get to it when I get to it. But with this, it's a 12-issue series done over a year span. And he had to make sure I got to get it done with it for a deadline. So I, I saw a video on Jim Lee, and he actually had a bet with a guy whether he could actually make the deadlines each month. Okay. And, and he said at the end of it, he got, I, I think the bet was like $500 or something like that. And he said, he, I, I got a check from him because I did it. <laughs> and he goes, and to this day, that check is still uh, tacked up to, I don't know, his wall or something. He he never cashed it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was Let funny. me, um, let's bring up some of the comments and stuff. Um, um, Angela uh, said, uh, love the comic. Um Derek was very much uh, hush is good but no favorites. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, we'll have some good interactions there. Angela, the artwork and story was amazing. It was my first intro into Batman's son. Oh okay. wow, okay. Interesting. All right. Then um Mark, Hush wouldn't make the top three for me, but it does come close. Good story, but I love the book more for the artwork. Yeah, I, I in the grand scheme of things, I would agree with that. The artwork is just fantastic. Oh, like okay. I said, Jim Lee, he's he's amazing. Yep. Okay, here's Derek's rankings. No Man's Land, Long Halloween, and Death of the Family. Ooh, I have never read No Man's Land. I'll have to go back I and check that out. I have not either. Uh, um, we covered Long I, Halloween, and I love Long Halloween. That was yeah, great. All right, I'm and making a note. No Man's Land. Death of death of the family. Or wait, oh, he says death of the family, not death in a fam- in the family. So death in the family is uh Jason Todd's death. Um which right. you know is just to me is is one of the just perfect Batman stories. I love it. Um mm-hmm. I've never read Death of the Family because I think that's it's the good. one is that the one where the Joker literally cuts yeah, off his, his face. Yeah, his face is all messed up. Yeah. Oh, see, I think that's part of what turned me off of that because I was like, okay, yeah, J- Joker's crazy and all, but in this, I don't know, man. That's that was even a little far for me. So, but I, right. I could see where Derek Derek would like that. I listened to his podcast, and yeah, I could see where he get get into that. Yep. 
Derek, certainly not top three for DC, DC animated Batman. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you are definitely right about that. That is so true. That is one of the things that we will be discussing. <laughs> yeah, Derek and I, we agree on that one for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, it was decent. It was decent, especially if you don't read the comic book, then it was pretty good. But if you read the comic, mm-hmm. yeah, the movie's terrible. Oh, <gasps> Derek, thank you. Oh, no Man's is the first gotcha. appearance of Cassie. Thank you. If you've listened to our Women of Batman movie, I uh, our Batman <laughs> show, the last show we did, sorry. Um, I was, I really like that character. So thank you. I'm, so, I'm going to definitely okay. take a look at that. No man's land. Yeah. Well, d- that- Matt says no man's land is really good. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's one. I have um, not read. uh, Angie says she needs to step up her game on Batman with the bat. <laughs> Darn right. You do <laughs> Batman rules. Yeah. And his superpower then, um, is he's rich. <laughs> Mark says dark Knight returns. Oh, that is a good one. Long Halloween. I love Dark Knight Returns. It's, yeah. Oh, number three, Long Long Halloween. Halloween. Gotcha. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. No Man's Land Dark. Okay, okay, okay. Wait. (laughs) Yeah. Um, All right. Dark Knight Returns, that's that's Frank Miller, and that is just, in my opinion, is one of the greatest Batman stories ever told. It's fantastic. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so Angie asks, An- Angela asks, what's uh, Cassie, which one she was in again? And then Derek responded for us, dude, on it. Thank you. Um, Black Bat, Batgirl, Orphan. Um, <clears throat> and, and stuff. So it was really cool. Awesome. All right. Tyler, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, getting some love through, uh, through the uh, Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, that would be Twitch. Yeah, Tyler said he's hosting us. That's awesome. Thank yes, you very thank much. Thank you. Um, All right. Let's, Angela, you ready to dig into some hush? Let's dig into hush. Yeah, we've done our 15 minute introduction. Now we got to get into our material. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Mike, if you had to rate, now we start off with our ratings, you know. Um, oh gosh! What would you rate? Now we have to rate them differently. We can't rate them right. the same. Yeah. Um, Please God, no! So, Listen, no, we got to we got to rate them differently. <laughs> so, so what are we using as a rating for this? Uh, oh yeah. So, um, hmm, what would apply, everybody? What would apply to Hush? Um, you know, something fun that would apply to Hush. To think of what was prevalent now in the comic. What's interesting? Well, in the in both the beginning, you know, it's a battering. You don't find out till the end, but it's a battering that cuts his line that he does. Uh, it wasn't both, but we'll get into that. We'll get into it. Okay. We'll, oh. we'll do batterings. We'll do batterings. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So, go ahead, my friend. All right. So uh, I'll start with the comic book. It, it, I'm going to rate this a five batterings in the comic book. I, I I love the story in it. And, you know, we've, <laughs> we can't praise the art any more than we already have. The, the art is fantastic. Jim Lee is a master. Um, right. So yeah, I, I give it a five in, in the comic book. Uh, the five movie out of five, side. eh? Yeah, five out of five, eh? <laughs> <laughs> For any Canadian listeners out there, eh? Take off, eh? You hoser. Um, so yeah, on the movie side, reference, I got it. <laughs> on, on the movie side, oh, I, I, I wanted to love the movie so much, and. When you read the comic book, the movie is just terrible. It, it's a mess. It's mm-hmm. uh, so I would give it two and a half bat- batarangs for the movie. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, I uh, let me give you my journey. I watched. I, I read the first two comic books in the series. Loved them. Absolutely loved them. You're right. The art is great. Then I was like, well, I got some time this evening to watch it, to watch the movie. So I watched the movie in the middle of it. (laughs) And I was like, okay, you know, I, you know, I can see where they made some changes here in the beginning. But then, you know, I watched the rest of the movie. and I was like, oh, okay. So this is kind of how it's going to play out. No, (laughs) not how it plays out. So I saw the movie with before I finished a majority of the comic. Okay. So, um, 
I, I would tell you, if you asked me to rate it then, I, t- I would have told you probably three out of five for the movie. Um, maybe 3.5 out of five, because I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I was upset about the whole Killer Croc for the beginning, because I loved Killer Croc um, in the first two in the first two uh, comic books, the first two of the series of the books. And I was like, oh, man, the art was so good on that. And they didn't use them like that. I'm like, that stinks, you know, kind of a thing. And then, um, but I had no idea that the rest of the series of books was going to be just as phenomenal as they are as storytelling wise. And, um, and then I was confused on some things. You know, I, I made a joke reference when we were doing Women of Batman episode where I was like, I was reading the description. I was like, oh, wait, it said that Hush was this person. Spoiler alert, you know, kind of a thing because I had not finished the books. And um, um, so he, here's here's where I'm headed now, because after it, I have been swayed by reading the comics. So the book is better than the movie. Just like anything else, the book is better than the movie. <laughs> um, I, I basically, after reading the whole series, that animated movie did not do justice at all to the story. And I would Great. give it one out of five. I was oh, so wow. upset. Wow. I was so upset. Um, I was like, you had this incredible story, and all you did was kind of make it your own kind yeah. of a thing. And well, they, you they, did not do justice to the original. You just took the line, you know, the theme of the movie kind of a thing, and then just, hey, let's, or the theme of the comics, and I'm just going to kind of make a movie. Mm-hmm. Whoever did that was not a fan of the book or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. But the, I, I was, I was very surprised. There you go. There's my quick rant. Okay. Because this is, you know, it's going to happen more later on, I bet, too. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, they 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 took out key characters, they took out key plot points. I mean, and and ultimately they changed the ending and who who really is the bad guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it uh, yeah it. You maybe you're right. Maybe I should lower my score. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, let's talk it out. Yeah. Let's talk it out. Matt though. says. Matt says that's be you were being nice. <laughs> yeah, I, Matt, I think you're right. I think I was being nice. Um, by the end of this, it may have a one score or a negative score. We'll t- we'll talk more at the end. <laughs> yeah, here's 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 what Derek says, and and I appreciate I appreciate this, Derek. Um, perfectly worded one for the movie, and, and this is what I like about what he says. It's a steady decline that destroys the source material. Oh, that's good. That's really that's good. That's really good, Derek. Thank you. You're right. Now, DC Gosh, Animated, yeah. man, usually DC Animated is super good. Um, th- th- they're some of the best, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they tend to blow away Marvel with their animation. I, I really believe so. Um, but every now and then, they just screw things up. And this is one of those ones they just totally screwed up. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, they took out t- key characters. They, they removed... Killer Croc. Well, they replaced Killer Croc with Bane. I think that was a bad mistake. Um, it was dumb. Uh, it was dumb. And I've seen some people. They didn't I, do justice to Bane. Oh, no. I agree. Bane is actually a very intelligent Batman uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, enemy. Um, you know, he, he comes Batman off villain. Mm-hmm. He, he comes off in appearances. Oh, he's going to be just the muscle head, uh, you know, an idiot, so on and so forth. But he's actually very smart. And, he is. and this does him no justice whatsoever. He should right. not have been put into the story at all. Um, Croc, Killer Croc was perfect for it because Killer Croc is kind of brainless, you know, um, right. and, and Killer Croc could be easily manipulated, I believe. So, uh, the comic mm-hmm. does it better with Killer Croc. I like that much better. Um, oh, and the art was just how they they made Killer Croc, and it was almost like Killer Croc was on Venom. Oh yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Oh yeah. Well, they, they they gave him something else that uh, they made him think was going to heal him, and it actually mutated him even more, um, mm-hmm. which was interesting too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have that. They they removed Huntress. From the movie altogether, Huntress isn't even part of it, you know. And she was a pretty pivotal character in the comic books. It's like, mm-hmm. what the heck? Why'd, why'd you take Huntress out? 
And basically, they replaced Huntress's part with with Batgirl. Now, I love Batgirl, but she's not the one that saves Batman. Huntress is, you know. So uh, <laughs> it's icky. <Right? laughs> it's just icky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's mm-hmm. what's Brian saying here? Uh, uh, Brian, he says here. I'll put it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Bane. Bane in the R-rated Harley Quinn animated series on HBO Max is hilarious, though. Such a parody of his Dark Knight Returns character. Uh, yeah. Okay, I I only watched, like, one episode of the Harley Quinn series, and I, I just can't get into it. I don't like it. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little messed up for me. Uh, I love Harley. I, I said that in the last episode. She yeah, was, you're a yeah, big Harley fan. And I was looking forward to it. I just, I don't know. I can't get into it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it, and that's only because um, I'm a jerk. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't watched it. No, I honestly, it's just time. You know how I am with time yeah. and, and, and stuff like that. So um, Derek says um, WB and DC in general have a bad habit of taking the sources and changing as if they want to give the fans something unexpected since they already know the endings. But what we really want to see, despite maybe knowing the ending in advance, are those. Um, hang on a second. It, it, we, I got it. I got it. It cut off on our screen. I didn't realize it did that because he wrote so much at once. Um, are those <laughs> stories brought to life or brought in, into motion? I agree. Now, okay, um, I, I do agree with that statement. That That's correct. Now, we've talked yep. about in the past, like uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead has done multi multiple versions of their stories. So like what you watch on television isn't necessarily what you see in the comic book. There's there's going to be differences. And even in the books, the novels, there's differences. But I think Walking Dead does it much better cuz um they might change the source material a little bit little bit, but I don't know. I think I think they do a better job with their end product. Where DC, I don't know what the heck they're doing. I, I don't get it. It, it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this was a mess. I I I just don't understand it. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're not there. We don't know what they're fighting or something. Maybe it's modeling, computer modeling. They're on a budget, and they're like, well, we can't recreate all of Killer Croc. We've already got Bane in the system, so let's just go ahead and reuse Bane or something. I I I don't know. Um, kind Mark, of thing, Mark says so. I need to give Harley another. <laughs> it gets better okay. as it goes, so I'll, right. I'll keep that All in right. mind, Mark. I'll keep it. In Maybe mind. that needs to be our crossover event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to talk about that. Um, oh my goodness! At some point, we got to talk about that. Ah, Brenda oh. says you mean much more better. <laughs> oh, much more better. Got to take a drink. Okay. okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. For the it, record, it, it. she said that I didn't. Right, but you still repeated it, so. Well, darn right, I did, because she said it. <laughs> she gets mad at us when we do that. She doesn't like it. Oh, my goodness. All right, so, all right. Great discussions, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. And if we don't get to your comments, I apologize. We're trying to, this is new for us on going through, you know, through the comments and stuff, and we're learning. So thank you for your patience with us. Um, okay. What was this? We haven't done this yet. What was your favorite part? Obviously, you know, we've already compared the two saying that books are better than the movie. So what was your favorite part in the books? What was your favorite part in the books? Or there may be several favorite parts. Yeah. Um, that's hard to say what's my favorite. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of great moments in the comic books. Um, but I, I think what stands out the most is the relationship between Bat, Batman and Catwoman. Um, cause that, that comes out pretty heavily in this comic book and we see that developing more in this one than we've ever seen in the past. And I find their interest, their, their, uh, relationship to very, be very interesting. I think they're, they're great together. Um, and yeah, I, I love that. I absolutely love it. Um, coming from somebody who wants to be more action oriented instead of uh, romance oriented, right. that's 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 the funny part about this. That's what I find best. Let, let me ask you this: Was this the first time that it was Batman revealed his identity to Catwoman? I was, believe so. Um, so. This was 
something cool about this series was when he finally revealed who he was. I, I want to say yes. Uh, of course, you know, DC's rebooted many times. Yeah, so it, it's, right, it's right. possible that could have happened previously and then been rebooted. And, you know, at this point, she didn't know who he was. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I'm going to say for argument's sake, yes, this is the first time. Um, and I love the way it was revealed. That was one thing the the book uh, that the movie got right because uh, the uh, reveal was kind of the same. It was oh well, mm-hmm. it was similar. Sort of. um, th- right. What was leading up to the reveal was the same because you had the conversation between Nightwing and Batman, and Nightwing's telling right. him, you know, I, I really think that you need to let her in. That's part of your problem. You know that you you don't trust people and so on and so forth. And then mm-hmm. Bat- and he goes, uh, what does he say? Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm talking too much or something to that extent. And Batman goes, you're right. And Nightwing goes, wait a minute. I'm right. He goes, yeah, you're right. You need to shut up. <laughs> yeah. It's none of your business. <laughs> it's none of your business. <laughs> That's what it was. It's none of your business. That's right. Right. And they, they said the same thing. It was almost the same conversation between the movie and the comic book. And I, I really did enjoy that. I thought that was hilarious. Right. So. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, I did it. I, I agree with you on the aspect that the story of Batman and Catwoman in their relationship, Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne was really good. Um, you know, I still find it funny to be open with you about people like, how come people are not putting Bruce Wayne and Batman together? I mean, do you, they're both huge. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how many people are that huge? And you're like, they're not the same. You know? Yeah, but anyway. okay. Batman looks more menacing in the in the outfit, than in he, the cape and the cowl, right? Than he does in a suit. You know, um, you know, it's the whole thing. You, you, you like, okay, uh, you live in Montana. How do you scare off the bears? What, what's what did you tell me when we we visited you in Montana? What was the thing? You make yourself look bigger, right? right? Right, you mm-hmm. you you try to appear bigger and stronger than what you are, and right. now granted, I, I think Batman's the true true identity between Bruce Wayne and Batman. I think Batman's yeah. the true identity. Bruce Wayne is actually the alternate identity, in opposed to Superman is actually the alternate identity, and Clark Kent is the real identity. Mm-hmm. They're they're mm-hmm. opposite of each other, but mm-hmm. I, I think this the same aspect is there he he makes himself bigger as batman than he does as bruce wayne he comes off more timid sure sure. just another caveat about being in montana i thought you were going to say look you've got to be able to outrun me so i'm going to trip you and then outrun you and let the bear get you first (laughs) yeah i don't quite think that's batman's uh (laughs) whatever um i will say one thing i liked about the movie um more than the the book well just the added thing that they did was they gave batman kryptonite brass knuckles you know kind of i did thing. too that i you know that was one thing i did think was better in the film where in the, in the in the comics he has a ring which that that's you know that's been canon for a long time the ring is canon i right. get the ring yeah, and I, I got it when i read it but, but i, I like, thought the brass knuckle or the kryptonite knuckles were cooler I was like, oh, yeah. I love that. And it, him putting them on, it was like, okay, that's a good addition. See, that that works. That's cool. You know, if they would have yeah. kept up with that kind of changes, that would have been fine. But, yeah. oh, well. <laughs> oh, here, we got to put up this from Brian. Um, Bruce's identity died when his parents died, and Batman was born. Wholeheartedly Ooh. agree with that. A great statement. Yep. That's a really good statement. I like that a yep. lot. Yep. That's why I say uh, the Bruce Wayne identity is actually the false identity and Batman's is his true identity. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> totally agree. Now, I want to go back to the Batarang. So that was a actually a oh, yeah. big difference. Um, in the comic book, The you you don't find out immediately – but we do find out later as the story goes on that it was a batarang that cut his his line, which led to him falling and uh, hurting himself, almost almost dying, cracking his skull mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But in, in the cartoon version, in the movie version, uh, Hush actually shoots with a gun 
the the line and breaks it. And and I thought I didn't like that change either. I was like, eh, it's kind of right. dumb. Um, I, I thought I thought it made more sense having the batarang hit it because I, I think it would be easier to hit that line with a batarang right. than I than I would with with a bullet. You know, right? So do we say much more sensier? Much made more, much more sensier. Right. I'm just kidding. There you go. Much, much, much more betterer. <laughs> much more betterer. Here we go. We're drinking, everybody. <laughs> Good thing I'm not doing my tequila shots. <laughs> right. Right. Which, by um, the way, Santo Respato is awesome. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. We took our drink. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I, I'm still trying to figure out what my favorite part of the of the comic is. Um. I enjoyed the whole thing. I I liked the surprise that um, you know having seen the film or you know the animated movie, and then when there's this quote unquote unmasking of Hush, and I was like, <laughs> oh, "It's Robin! What is Jason Todd? What's going on?" And I, I did. I was like, "I didn't see this coming. What? How are they going to play this?" Blah blah blah. Then I was like. Oh, it's Clayface. It's Clayface. And then when they went back and and uh, later on when when they said that uh, when Tommy was shot in you know mm-hmm. that it was actually Clayface. Right, right. Because Tommy shot. I like that. So I like that a lot. So yeah, it, it's wow. Spoiler alert! Dang. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. You've already read it. <laughs> there you go, Matt. Does that make you happy? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert on a comic that's 21 years old. <laughs> um, sorry. Wait, is that still older than him? No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding Matt. <laughs> no, Matt's older than 21. Um, right. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I forgot where we were at. Oh, my gosh. We were talking about Clayface. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And... So, yeah, it's revealed to us later. Well, first, the first reveal, they, they play it off as Jason Todd, which is a fantastic scene in the comic book. And we didn't get it that really in the is. movie at all, which sucks, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But what I love is how Batman figures out it's not Jason Todd. Uh, that was yes. fantastic because they started asking him, Wait a minute. How did you how did you figure out it's not him? And he goes, mm-hmm. I could tell by his moves. Because he didn't move like Jason Todd at all. He, he moved, moved like Nightwing. He moved like Dick Grayson. And that's mm-hmm. because Clayface didn't encounter Jason Todd really. So J- uh, Clayface can't mimic uh Jason Todd's movements, so he had to pick a Robin, you know, or somebody, and he picked uh Nightwing and Nightwing's going to mm-hmm. use all the uh, acrobats and stuff that he uses, and that's what he did. And he's like, he didn't move like Jason Todd at all. And I thought that was great. Yeah. So that's 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 one of the detective sides in, in this this story. I, I thought that was really cool. <clears throat> mm-hmm. oh, gosh, right? At least those are just on you on YouTube. We're getting bad uh, yeah, comments just, and stuff, so. I'm going to take care of this. I just hit block on both of those. Oh, good. I I was doing the same thing. It was giving me an error, so that's fine. Oh, oh yeah. It just gave me one too. Oh shoot. Now I just lost uh, all the chat. So (laughs) anyway, I'm back. Okay. All right. Are you still seeing the chat? I am. Um, yours probably rebooted. Yeah, I think. And when it reboots, you, you don't get the prior. Yeah, that's what happened. So that's what happened to me earlier. So yeah. Okay, so I might have lost everyone's comments, but sorry. Well, most of them are on Facebook, so we're good on that one if you want to. I was trying to block something that came through. Yeah, we got some junk, so, yeah, so. um, Mark and Derek, we need Tito. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Angela said earlier we need to make her a mod. That's true, we could. We we could do that. Anyway. That would be cool. Let's move on with Hush. 
Yes. Hush, hush, hush. Hush, little baby. Okay. Um, oh, that was another thing that was good. That was in there. I, I, and they cut that, that from he, the movie too. And mm-hmm. that was, that was the reason he was named Hush. It was like, what? <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I, I thought for sure, I, I mean, I fell for it that Joker killed, that Joker killed, um, Tommy. I fell for it and he's like, no, I didn't do it. You know, kind of a thing. I was like, oh, what? Joker for once is innocent. That's crazy talk, you know, kind of a thing. So I really, I, I really, uh, enjoyed that. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, with it, the, the fact that we find out Joker didn't actually shoot, uh, uh, Tommy. Tommy. Well, <laughs> technically mm-hmm. nobody shot Tommy, but <laughs> technically. right. Technically. But what was even what was even better was the fact that uh whose gun did he shoot him with? He shot him with Commissioner was... Gordon's gun. Gordon's gun. And see they cut that from the movie too. Because mm-hmm. it was it was revealed that the gun that that was that uh that Tommy got shot with was actually Commissioner Gordon's uh a gun that he turned in when he retired. Mm-hmm. Again, another difference because in the comic book, Commissioner Gordon was still Commissioner Gordon. I mean, in the movies, yeah, in the comics, Commissioner Gordon was still Commissioner or was retired, and in the movies, he was still Commissioner Gordon. Mm-hmm. So, I, I again, mm-hmm. I liked it better the way they did it in the comic books. He retired; he had turned into his service piece, and that's what they stole to shoot Tommy with to try and. Uh, frame commissioner gordon for the murder of of tom thomas elliott mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. bad plot was- bad plot change totally yeah. bad yeah yeah matt thanks for joining us oh, oh matt. matt's gotta go yep thanks matt so and also <clears throat> yeah i tell you um really um the storylines, the interweaving storylines within the comic were really well done. And mm-hmm. this was one, even when we were with murdering, nerdery and murdery guys, where Zig had made that comment, the plot services the characters. Right. Well, um, in some stories, the characters service the plot and some yes. other stories, plot services the characters. Yeah. yeah, and uh, oh, this one was totally the plot was servicing the characters and the character development and the character, you know, getting insights to the characters' um, motivations and desires and frustrations. And because, well, I'd say that's true for the comic book, uh, the movie. I don't know what the heck was servicing what. Right, <laughs> I, I'm almost just talking about the okay comic book. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I mean yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, I gave it one out of five. I'm I'm moving on, moving on. But anyway, right. But I tell you what, I, I thought the whole interaction with the Joker, where Batman was about to kill him, <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> right. I thought that was just um. Oh, when when Batman death. goes berserk. <laughs> yes, and and it was like, and it was Jim Gordon who brought him out. You know what right. I mean. And, right. um, you know, just imagine if Jim Gordon hadn't been there. It was almost like with with the master plan, you know, was Batman supposed to kill, you know, Joker or, you know, uh, with th- this whole chessboard, ple- you know, thing whole yeah. going on and stuff. And um, Oh, speaking of the chessboard, that's something yeah. else they removed. It wasn't chess. They, so in, in the comics, again, they, they totally removed the fact that, uh, Thomas Elliot and and Bruce Wayne were childhood friends in, in the comic, and, and they completely mm-hmm. removed that in the film. So you don't get any of the background story on on Thomas Elliot, and, and I hate that because we had mm-hmm. this great story of them as children. Because Bruce is having a tro- having trouble connecting with with other kids, and then him and Thomas Elliot, the the two of them just boom, they melded together, and they were mm-hmm. like best friends. And they played this little game. It wasn't chess, but it was like some kind of Civil War uh, uh, pieces that that they they played mm-hmm. this game. And and the whole story kind of revolves around them playing this game. Mm-hmm. And and they kind of made chess references because like 
Thomas makes the point that uh, he's always five moves ahead ahead of Bruce, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And and the interesting thing is that's that's kind of that kind of becomes one of Bruce's philosophies as he becomes Batman that he always has to stay ahead of of the criminals. So he mm-hmm. has to he has to learn the criminals and know who they are. You know, it's like we've said before when when B- Batman battles and he's battling somebody for the very first time chances are he's probably going to lose that first battle because he doesn't know anything about his opponent. But then he's going to study it. He's going to study their moves. He's going to study who they are. You know, he's going to find out about them. And then once he gets that information, you're dead. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. you you can tell in the story where he uh, took some of those elements of them, their childhood, and applied to him being Batman. Again, lost in the movie. It, it's not there. Lost in the movie. Yeah, completely mm-hmm. gone. Well, let me ask you this. One of the things that I enjoyed, um, well, this is balanced. There's some parts I liked and parts I didn't like. But um, in the story itself, one of the surprises I got, Angela, I'm, I'm really going to spoil it for you here about the ending and stuff. But the movie, <laughs> it was like the Riddler was hush. You know what right. I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, cause in the I movie, thought, they actually kill Thomas, uh, Elliot. They actually do. There's no Thomas Elliot connection to Hush at all. No. And, yeah. and another thing they removed. Oh, well, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm cutting right. you off. No, I, I was just saying that, um, and then when we get to the comics, it was, oh, it's Robin. Nope. <laughs> that's not Robin. You know, oh, it's Two Face. Nope, it's not Two Face, <laughs> right? You know, it, it really did a nice job. But the, I mean, you did get the point that Thomas Elliot is Hush, um, is Hush, and right. and I like that, and I like that they made it open ended where he, they could bring him back. But I thought the motivation was really weird. The motivation was he wished both his parents had died, you know, kind of because he was jealous of Bruce Wayne being yeah, the, with all this the, money. The motivation is probably the the only drawback to the comic book because it, it it was weak. It really was. It just right. it shows him as a uh, a spoiled brat, uh, you know, who all he wants is to be rich and. I don't know. Yeah, you're right on that. Maybe maybe I should take comic book just a notch down. <laughs> no, no, it was still good. It was still good. Oh, Everything no, I, th- else, I still think it's a fantastic story. I, I, Let I really me put it to you this way. I would give the comic book six out of five batterings, but there was know. a couple of things, so it went down a notch. So it's at five out of five okay. batterings. <laughs> well, I already gave it five, so. Um, but you're right. The motivation is bad. It's, it's not. It was it weird. It was yeah. weird. Um, but I, 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 but I did like the idea of how the comic, the storyline kind of threw me off. Cause I thought, Oh, Tommy's got a brilliant mind. He's, he's always talking about oh. this whole chessboard thing with all this playing these games. You got to put yourself in the mind of your opponent, you know, kind of a thing. Right. And I thought, Oh yeah, that's good. But then at the end of the comic where it said that the Riddler was the mastermind behind it all. Right. I was like, my mouth dropped open just like it did just now. Well, it, it's, like, you're supposed to. You're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. But the, how they played it off in the book made sense. The storytelling of it was really, really good. Okay. Um, I want to put up a comment. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. From Mark. Um, I love it when they flash back to Bruce and Tommy as kids and they witness that battle between the original Green Lantern and Icicle. That was awesome. I agree. Yep. I agree. And we didn't get it in the, the film and, and the film would have, I, I think it, it, it would have uh, imp- been improved by s- some of the, that stuff that they took out, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was an awesome moment. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, really like mm-hmm. seeing the original Green Lantern. It was neat. Now real quick, <laughs> you know, I, my brain went to where they were at, at the, you know, at the whole opera house thing. And, and you had said, Oh, just wait, Steven, when we were doing our women of Batman episode, just wait, Leslie Tompkins is in it. Yep. And when I got to that part, I was like, ah, look who's there. Another one they cut out of the movie. <laughs> now, Did like I said, out? yeah, she wasn't in it. His okay. date was some young girl. It wasn't okay. It, it wasn't Leslie Tompkins. Um, 
and and I I I think it's important to have her in in it. Now she could have played a bigger role. Uh, I think it. I think honestly, she should have had some some help in in re, uh, Bruce recovering or something. Um, they kind of just used her as a almost a cameo in, in the comic book. But again, mm-hmm. that that's another difference that they pulled away from the film. That I you know, mm-hmm. um, and I I liked how. Uh, she makes a reference to to Selena Kyle when she's like, uh, "Aren't you going to go help?" <laughs> right, like basically saying, <laughs> "I know who you are." <laughs> right, I, I, I know your identity. <laughs> Which yes, agree. I love so, that. I thought it was fantastic. Yep, but with the Riddler at the end, um, um, with the Riddler at the end being the mastermind behind it all. I loved how Batman, you know, cause he knew Bruce Wayne was Batman, but I loved his, I love the Batman's response. I just thought, Oh, that is so good. And it was the whole point of saying, you know, the thing about a punchline to a joke or, you know, to yes. a riddle. Right. You know, it's already, it's oh, already been when, when he it's, said, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, an elephant sits on a fence. I I can't remember the the riddle that Batman gives him. Um, something about an elephant sitting on a fence, and and basically Riddler's like, well, it, it it's it's you no time good. To get a new fence. Yes, everybody new, knows that. Right, one. everyone knows that one. So it's it's it, the riddle's no good. And Bruce is like, exactly. If everyone knows who I am, then your riddle doesn't. Your riddle makes no sense. Um, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Good connection. I wanted to put put this up. Brendan and I just found this out, and I wished we would have realized this for our Firefly episode. But Lee Thompson, uh, uh, Les, uh, Leslie Thompson, or whatever her name is, the Doctor uh, in Gotham, the woman that plays her is the same woman from Firefly. Oh, which one? Who was she's, that? She's she's uh, 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 the. The hooker. <laughs> or, oh, Marina Baccarin. Yeah, yeah. Um, she she's got a new show starting on NBC, and I was like, "Hey, that's what's her face from Firefly." And mm-hmm. yeah, there we go. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Brian chiming in, being our uh, Tito. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she was in Deadpool and yeah, and, yeah, she was in Deadpool. She's been in a bunch also. of stuff, right? Yeah, because she was Deadpool's girlfriend, wasn't she? Yep. Ah, Brian said at the same time. <laughs> yeah, said at the same time. Yeah, I always found that funny that Batman's girlfriend was Deadpool's girlfriend. I got a kick out of that. <clears throat> it was funny. Yay! Uh, yeah. No. Um. Here. Or is... no, no, she wasn't Batman's girlfriend. She was. Gordon's girlfriend, wasn't she? Yeah, she was Gordon's girlfriend. Okay. In the TV series. I I couldn't either. I started to kind of wipe away a lot of the TV series because the ending, I well, Mm -hmm. I don't even think I watched the last episode because... Yeah, uh, Brian said she was in the V remake too. Yes, uh, um, and I did watch some of that. I Uh, yeah. See, I wanted to love that because I loved the original V and I couldn't get into mm -hmm. it. I just, yep. yeah. She was uh she was also in uh, Stargate. Oh, was uh, she? The last couple of seasons of Stargate and stuff. Oh. She played a villain uh, in, in that. See, I so. should know that my doppelganger is one of the stars of that show. <laughs> right? <laughs> At least name um, name doppelganger anyway. <laughs> yep. Angela says, "Yep, she'll always be um Oh, sorry. Boy, the chat moves, and so it moves when I know. Moving. Yep, she'll always be Anara for me. Yeah, yeah that's where I always Thank remember her from right. is Anara. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, yes, I think, Angela, you had said a long time ago, we should probably take a drink every time we rabbit trail. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's part their fault. <laughs> <laughs> We can't be totally blamed for that anymore. <laughs> right. Right. Well, here's the thing. Um, if you ask me to give my overall impression about Hush, um, hands down, read the book. Do not watch the movie. Yeah, I agree. I read totally the book. agree. 
if I you're totally limited agree. on time, which is really how I have to, you know, I justify and judge a lot of things is um, read the book, <clears throat> read the book in this case. And totally you could agree. probably read the book. If you're a fast reader, you probably could read it in an hour and a half. I, I read it over mm-hmm. Valentine's Day weekend. Um, again, Did you? It's, it's 12 issues. Yeah. So I'd read a little bit, put it down. A little bit later. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about having the Kindle version is it picked right up after <laughs> wherever I had to stop and stuff. So, um, but boy, I tell you what, probably having the paper version of this, <laughs> ooh, ooh, it's probably pretty cool. And so, Brian said we sh- we should all take a drink. Then. <laughs> there we go. All right, all right, here we go. That's funny. That's funny. I love it. I love it. And all. So, um. You know, I don't know if I really had a favorite part of the whole series or, you know, the whole comic and stuff. Um, I really, I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. I did too. So thank you. I have to give you kudos, Mike, because I was like, oh, yeah, hush that. Yeah, that sounds good and stuff. I'm like, oh, it's really good. It's really good. The book was really good. Now, one of the other things that really ticked me off about the changes between the two Uh was uh, the ending with Catwoman and and the reason Catwoman leaves because they're totally different from the movie. They are to totally the comic different. Uh huh. I think the comic book was so much better. So, yes. In the movie, she gets upset because he does not kill the Joker, you know, um, mm-hmm. which to me is more Robin than it is Catwoman. You know, Ooh, that's, that's Jason, insightful. Yeah, that's Jason yeah. Todd. That's that's Jason Todd's conversation to Batman. That's exactly uh-huh. what Jason was saying to Batman. And with mm-hmm. Jason Todd, I totally get it because the freaking Joker killed him, man. So yeah, mm-hmm. if if mm-hmm. he's going to be alive again, yeah, I could see him being upset with Batman that that the Joker's still running around. Why didn't you avenge me? You know, I totally get uh, Jason's perception on that i don't quite get catwoman's though catwoman to me that didn't make any sense now you but you're just to reiterate you're talking about the movie i'm talking about the movie because in the comic book i like the twist they gave it in the comic book because in the comic book he doesn't reveal to anyone the opponent's name the enemy's name okay the only ones that know are hush himself uh the riddler because the two of them planned it, and then Batman, because they tell Batman who who his name, you know, what his name is. They tell mm-hmm. him his name is Hush. So they don't know this, but each villain has made a reference to Hush throughout, you know, as you go through the comic book. For instance, Jonathan Crane, uh, Scarecrow, when he comes into the comic book, he's singing the lullaby, Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Mm-hmm. Which Riddler reveals that's actually where they came up with the name Hush, which absolutely love. I think it wor- it works really well with the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but so you know, unless you were directly involved with what was going on, you didn't know what Hush's name is. So then, that's when Catwoman whispers to Batman, "Hush," and she's just telling him, "Shh." You know, she, why'd you say that day? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we get the we get the Martha moment. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say that name for? Why did you say Martha? You know, yeah. No, but yeah. no, I I I thought it was done very well in the comic book. I liked that, and he gets pissed at her because now all of a sudden it's in his head. I can't trust you, you know, and it's always mm-hmm. been in the back of his head because we also have the moment in the comic book. Where uh, um, Damian Wayne comes into and in, see in the comic book it's Damian Wayne and or no 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 I'm sorry uh, it's Timothy Drake in the comic book and in the movie it's Damian Wayne. Um, so in the comic book Timothy Drake comes into the Batcave discovers uh, Catwoman there and they have a a small fight and he's ticked that she's there and blah, 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 blah. And then she gets mad, steals one of the bat cycles and takes off. And then Timothy Drake looks at Batman and says, how did I do? I mean, they staged Mm -hmm. the whole thing and it was all about whether he could trust Catwoman or not. 
And they completely cut that out of the movie, you know? They did. And then, so then when you have this moment between, at the end, between Bruce, I mean, in the comic book anyway, between Bruce and Mm -hmm. Selena, and she says, hush, that goes back to that, where he's like, I can't trust her. She's, she's, she's in on it. She's one of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what separates them. That's why she gets pissed and leave. Because she doesn't understand why he got upset, and he thinks he can't trust her. Right. I thought it was fantastic writing, and they just they just crapped on it in the movie. They did. <laughs> it's horrible. Yep. the the yep. The movie ending was terrible, and then this whole reveal of uh, the entire thing was all Riddler. Thomas Elliot barely had anything to do with it. That you're you know, talking about the movie. Yeah, I'm talking about the movie now. I I hate it. Oh, mm-hmm. another difference that I thought was fantastic in the comic book was it's revealed in the comic book that Thomas Elliot had uh, he had gotten a hold of um, excuse me I can't think of the guy's name the the guy that Bruce had taken into the Batcave years ago and entrusted oh, yeah, to do all the technical electrical he, work. He did all stuff. his tech work. He he worked on the Batmobiles, you know, but he was a mute. He couldn't talk. And <clears throat> he was almost an Igor to Batman. <laughs> what he almost was, let's face it. Um right. But but uh Thomas Elliot gets to him. And then Thomas Elliot actually Harold, thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Mark saved me. Three Geeky Dads saving us again. <laughs> Shout out to Three Geeky Dads. If you haven't listened to their their podcast, they're awesome. I've listened to yep. uh, several of them in the last couple of days. Really love their show. They're they're funny guys. I'm getting ready to listen to the one on Crawl, by yeah, the way. That was a good I one. Love that that movie was a good as a kid. one. I like it. I, I never one. watched that movie, but it was fantastic conversation on it. Loved it. Um anyway, so uh Thomas Elliott has Harold implant uh, basically subliminal messages into the Batcave computers. So before all this happened, Batman kept getting these subliminal messages of, of Thomas Elliot, Thomas Elliot, Thomas Elliot. So then when he gets hurt and uh, uh, Huntress gets him back to, well, basically Huntress gets him back to the Batcave. Huntress is the one who saves his butt, not Batgirl. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Alfred finds out that his injuries are way beyond his medical skills and that they have to get some, somebody you know more competent um, in there to to work on Bruce Bruce starts tapping and he's tapping in Morris code and what he's tapping is Thomas Elliot and the only reason he thought of Thomas Elliot was because of those subliminal messages that were that were planted in his head again mm-hmm. completely taken out of the movie mm-hmm. and that was stupid. That was dumb that they, they took that out. Mm-hmm. Well, it moved into the whole thing where there was an implant in his brain and Superman had to zap it out with his heat vision. Right. Yep. Yep. I forgot about that too. And we didn't mm-hmm. get that moment either. Now we did get the cool, uh, uh, poison Ivy takes over Superman. Yeah. That was done pretty well. It was done the, pretty well. Yeah, that was done pretty well between the movie and comic. I like that. And then we had the whole uh, how uh, they convinced Superman was to go after Lois Lane, and Catwoman pushes her off the top of the Daily Planet. <laughs> right, right. Oh, and one other thing that, that they did right that was the same was when uh, Catwoman knocks out uh, uh, Poison Ivy. And and Superman goes, was that necessary? And both Batman and Catwoman at, at the same time go, yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That was the same between the comic and the movie. So that they yeah. did that well. Um, yeah. What's Brian saying here? Uh, Brian see. says, uh, I didn't think I read the story before uh, because I'm more of a Marvel guy. But the more I hear you guys talking, the more I'm thinking that Mark let me borrow the graphic novel last year or the year before. Oh, definitely read it, Brian. It is fantastic. It no, is I think so he's saying much. that he did read it. Now, it just, oh, it's okay. been a while since he read it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
I would highly recommend going back and rereading it. It's it's a great great story, and it's about yeah, I'm totally looking it's up now about I like think this year is like the twentieth anniversary of the comic. Yeah, because the comic came out in two thousand two, and it's twenty twenty two. So this is twentieth anniversary of the comic. They did so. a fifteenth anniversary comic. I wonder if they'll do a twenty. I don't know. They've done several different iterations of it. Um, I just got the trade paperback, which the trade paperback is beautiful, by the way. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. I agree. You you need to revisit it, Brian. It, it's a fantastic story. Awesome. Do it right now. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Oh, yeah. All right. So overall, give me your overall thought. What's your overall? Just say, oh, you know, kind of recapping. So overall, the comic is fantastic. Um, but I, you know, but since you mentioned it, I think you're right about the, 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 uh, motivation behind, uh, Thomas Elliott. Um, I, I didn't really think about that before, but now that you mention it, I agree with you. It's, it's weak. The, the motivation is extremely weak. But other than that, I think the comic is darn near a perfect comic story. I, I love it. Mm-hmm. Love the story. Um, the movie, I, I think... <laughs> I think Don't Matt, waste your time, everybody. I, Don't waste your time. I think Matt was right. I was being kind when I gave it a two and a half, and I think you're right. I think it needs to go down to one, because the more we discuss this, the more I do not like the movie. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think if I read the comic book, I might like the movie. If I hadn't read the comic book, I might have enjoyed the movie, not knowing mm-hmm. the 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 true story behind it. But mm-hmm. you know, when you read the comic book, yeah, that movie sucks. It's it's really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then this whole thing with the Riddler getting the the question mark on his forehead. What the heck? <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> that was that was weird. Yeah, yeah was, that was weird. It just yeah, the, um, yeah, because I did see it, you know, early on, and I'm kind of glad I did. Um, because if if I spent all that time watching or reading the book, and then then afterwards watching the movie, I just probably would have blown a gasket. You oh, know? and I in in the movie they also didn't uh, put Thomas and. Uh, the Riddler together, you know, cause the Riddler goes to Thomas to try and fix. Cause we find out that the Riddler has brain cancer, which is the whole reason he, he, uh, um, gains access to the Lazarus pit is to, uh, heal himself of his brain tumor. And that's when he find he figures out while that was happening. Cause the Lazarus pit tends to make people insane. And mm-hmm. for some reason it like gave, uh, the Riddler, all this extra knowledge. And one of those things was that Batman was actually Bruce Wayne. So, he was able to figure it out. Yeah. The, he was able to put the pieces together quicker than he ever was before. Right. So, mm-hmm. and and they really didn't go into a lot of that, but the whole Thomas connection to, to the Riddler was the fact that he went to Thomas to try and get, the tumor removed and Thomas couldn't do it. And th- they just completely threw that out of, of the movie too. I don't even think they really went in the movie that Thomas was actually a, uh, a surgeon. I don't even think they revealed that in the movie. To be honest with you, I think I've blocked that movie out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to wait till after this episode to do that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think now that we're getting to the end of this episode, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Because <laughs> it's kind of hard to review a movie when you don't when you don't remember it. You at can't all. remember it, right? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, you, you can start blocking it out. <laughs> right. All right. Well, Mike, first off, thank you. Thanks for the, uh, the idea. Thanks for, you know, the, the, the book is one of those things that I'll always remember. I'll, I, I just enjoyed it. The art was fantastic. The story was great. Um, and no, it was really you can't good. see it with my Gosh. green screen. It is not showing up. Yeah. Mike's having green screen problems, everybody. So just, you know, he's trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, I think it's more browser problems than it is green screen problems. But whatever. it may be browser problems. Yeah. Yep. Could we be. We haven't figured out the correct settings. So. I know. Um, all right. Well, man, we an hour and 10 into it. That's good. That was good. Good yeah, discussions. It, yeah. 
<laughs> yes, glad we could save you time, you know. Glad we could <laughs> save you time. Brian said I looked like I was beaming up. <laughs> I was trying to show the hush uh, trade paperback is what I was trying. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's see if I can do that again. <laughs> That's funny. So, all right. The book is amazing. The book is amazing. Um, Oh, Angela says, uh, remind you of Ready Player One, where the book was fantastic, but the movie was poo poo. (laughs) Uh, I didn't read the book, actually. Angie, I've only seen the movie. I I actually enjoyed the movie. movie. I, I actually enjoyed the movie, so now I'm probably like, hmm, I probably should. Uh, didn't now, Ready Player Two come out recently, too? Uh, the sequel the book? book? Yeah, the book is out. We got that for Megan for Christmas, I think, last year. Um, I think they're oh. supposed to do a sequel to the film, too. So, Gotcha. Um, now, I think Megan read, well, I know Megan read the book, and she's a big fan of the book. I, and she enjoyed the movie, too, so I don't know. I had to ask her. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Well, you know, maybe she didn't get all the uh, pop culture references that go way back before she was born. Uh, no, trust me, she did. <laughs> being, being your daughter. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's right. My kid knows those pop re- pop culture references. She she was right. raised on those pop culture references. I raised right her on. right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we better end with that real quick. So, <laughs> All right. You want to do a little housekeeping before we go, Stephen? Yeah, a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of housekeeping. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, make sure and check us out on twogeeksmike.com. That's the number two, G-E-E-K-S, Mike, M-I-C, K-E-Y-M-O, you know, sorry. Great. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> Um, that's our portal to everything uh, in the the geek dumb. Um, you can get to our Kofi page. You can get to our Facebook page, um, and all our other stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Also, please make sure and like us, follow us on Facebook or wherever you watch us. If you watch us on YouTube, give us a like and a follow and a subscribe there. Um, if you listen to us on audio, please, uh, it, you know, go in and give us a five star rating, um, and, and leave us a review if you possibly can. Uh, I don't know which of those platforms allow you to do that. I know iTunes does, and that helps the search algorithm to find our podcast. The higher, higher your ratings, the easier people can see your podcast. So if you would, please, uh, give us high ratings and, and a review wherever you can. Um, anything else, Stephen? Uh, no, no, but this has been great. Um, don't forget that on Kofi, we're going to start doing our classic sci-fi series for our supporters. So if there is a movie, classic sci-fi movie that is older than 1980 or the, you know, older than the eighties, um, yeah, we, we'll we, do we, some... we could say eighties cause there's some things in eighties I consider classic. Some things I don't exactly consider classic. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's coming down the pike and we're pretty excited about that. And um, so, but if there's a classic sci-fi movie you would like us to talk about, please let us know. Um, We've got some, we've got some fun ideas of of what's coming up. So it it should be uh, good times. Good times. All right. Well, with that said, I will close things out. Um, See you next time over and out and may the force be with you. Thank you for joining us today on the Two Geeks in a Microphone podcast. Tune in next week when we will have more news and reviews. Until then, may the force be with you. <laughs>